Hello, 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 everyone. Yol and Daniel here, your relationship coach. Welcome to Straight Talk with Yo. That's me. Now, I have some great stuff to share with you. I hope that you are ready. I hope that you got your notepad and your pen so you can write some things down, okay? And so tonight, we I'm just gonna get into it, all right? Tonight we are talking about reasons why divorced women fear getting into relationships, all right? And so I'm gonna cover just three reasons why. But before we get into those reasons, you know, I want to ask, ask you ladies out there, those ladies who've been divorced, if you, if you know someone who's been divorced, why do you think that this woman is afraid? Why do you think, you give me your reasons, why you think that this lady is afraid to get into a new relationship after she's gone through a divorce or maybe after a relationship has ended, okay? And while you writing that up, I'm going to tell you my experience um, with this issue after I got a divorce. And if you don't mind me sharing that, um, you know, after I got my divorce, and of course I did have this conversation before, about me being divorced, um, I was afraid to get into another relationship. I was scared that no one would want me, that I wasn't good enough, that a divorce was like a stamp of disapproval on my forehead and on my back. And so no one would ever want to have a relationship with me, especially being a woman who was a Christian and Christ and you know divorce being frowned on, um, I was just so afraid that I was not going to ever be able to find someone of quality who would want to be in a relationship with me anymore, and that fear just was so insurmountable. You know, it's something that kept me up at night. I would worry about it. I would think about it. And as a result, I would like hide myself away and I wouldn't really want to meet anyone else because I didn't think anyone else would want me, you know? So that was one way that affected me. And one of the things that got me out of that was when I started seeing people approaching me. It wasn't that, um, not necessarily people I wanted to be in a relationship with, but just having someone approach me, I was like, wow, okay, so I still am desirable because I know that's one of the things we deal with as women, especially going through a divorce. You're like, am I still desirable? Am I still wanted? Because like, hey, you went through this divorce and it's like this person didn't want me anymore. The relationship didn't work out. So that means there must be something wrong with me. All right, because those are the thoughts that I had. And as women, we tend to do that a lot. We tend to internalize, you know, these negative feelings about ourselves because of what, of, of events that happen in our lives, right? But once I started realizing that, hey, people were still interested in me and not only interested in me, but wanted to have a relationship with me despite my past, it's like, oh, okay, maybe that's something I need to, you know, probably rethink. And that started me on the journey to, you know, even addressing the issue of divorce and remarriage and all these different things, you know, that I had to um, uh, address in my mind before I would feel comfortable even trying to get married again. So once I was able to deal with those issues then, and I realized that, hey, I was desirable and someone wanted to be my companion for the rest of my life, I was like, hey, then it made that decision so much easier for me. So here are, like I said, the three things, the three fears that divorced women have um, about new relationships. 
And if you don't mind me reading, like I said earlier, I do have a lot of material to cover, so I hope you got your pen and paper. Hey, Romita, how are you? I hope you got your pen and paper. So, three reasons. Reason number one is this woman is afraid of history repeating itself. Number two, afraid of missing the warning signs again. And number three, the process of self-delusion, delusionment, if that's a word, <laughs> or deluding yourself. Okay, so number one, a lot of women uh, who are divorced or from broken relationships are afraid to getting into another relationship again because they're afraid of history repeating it, that itself. You're afraid that if you go through another relationship that the same thing is going to happen at the end of the day. You're going to end up with a broken relationship. You're going to end up with a divorce again. And you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I can handle that shame again. I don't know if I can handle the pain of a divorce. I don't know if I can handle the disappointment of a relationship ending again. You know, and... It, you feel like a double failure because a lot of women feel like a failure after a divorce or broken relationship and to go through another one in your mind will be like something that you just cannot and don't want to have to address again in your life. And I have to say that these are definitely valid feelings. I've been there. It's like you're like, what if I, I find someone else and it looks good at first, but then in a few years, the relationship ends. And you're like, I don't know if I want to do this again. And those are valid feelings, okay? But the question is, do we give in to those fears? Now, if you were giving someone advice, say, for example, you have a kid and they fell down and busted their knee or busted their lip, and they're like, you know what? I'm not going to run again. I'm not going to do this thing again. Is that something that you will encourage them to do? I doubt that very much, right? Tell me in the chat, is, would you encourage them to not try again after something went wrong, they got hurt or something like that? No, because it's part of life. We go through things in life, things hurt us, but sometimes we got to find a way to get back up and keep moving on right and so if we don't do what i would say the work to figure out what happened and why the relationship ended then you are doomed to repeat history again and end up in another broken relationship okay so reason number two the fear of missing the signs. So you're like, oh my gosh, Yolanda, I looked back and I saw that all these warning signs were there, you know, and I missed them. And you're like, how could I have missed these warning signs? And how could I have missed the red flags? You know, and I don't want to be in a situation where I miss the red flags again. And how do I know that I'm missing red flags? And how do I know that there are red flags to be missed? Right? Again, valid questions. But for me, the question is, why did you not know there were red flags? Okay. And I want you to be honest with yourself and ask yourself the question, did I really miss the red flags? Or is it that did I ignore my intuition? And these are questions that I had to ask myself. Because as I looked back on my first marriage and even as that relationship got started, I had to look back and see like, hmm, yes, Yolande you did miss some red flags. There were some flags that were like waving, hi, hey, hey, and I didn't pay attention to them. And I had to realize like, wow, you know, I have to ask myself the question is like, I missed those flags because I wanted the person to be happy with me 
And so I turned away from those things that were kind of glaring at me, you know? And sometimes as women, because we are insecure in who we are, and we may not know exactly what we want. Sometimes we might be so happy to be in a relationship that we are willing to look aside at certain things that um, might be glaring at us. You may not even be able to see it because you're so enamored by this person. You're just so happy, you know, that you just gloss over those red flags okay and so for us to not miss red flags again then we have to look at ourselves and try and figure out what is happening with me what is going on with me that i'm not able to recognize these signs when they're happening because the truth is there are always going to be people out there with flags but that doesn't mean that we have to go after them so the question is, why is it that you, me, why is it that we go after the people who have red flags? Why is it that we are attracted to the people with red flags, right? And so that's the inner work that needs to be done in you, okay? And it could be because you, we lack self-confidence, we're insecure about who we are, we don't know who we are and we therefore don't know exactly what we want so with someone showing interest in us sometimes we might gravitate to that because we don't know what we want who we are and we don't have any set of structure as to how we would want a relationship to be okay so if you're missing red flags then those are things that need to be addressed. And then number three, we delude ourselves. You know, so you might see the red flag, right? You might see that flag flying high, but then you tell yourself, well, and I know I was guilty of this, so I ain't saying nothing that I, I haven't done myself. You might say, well, it's not as bad as it looks. You know, you might say, oh, well, you know, um, it's going to get better as, you know, the relationship progresses, progresses. Or you might say, well, you know, he, you know, he says that this is not what it is. So you believe him. Hey, Julia, you believe this person over your own um, fears and concerns. Okay, so we delude ourselves into these relationships where the flags, the red flags and the alarms are blaring, you know, and it could also be that you wanted this relationship so badly that you were willing to overlook all fears, all concerns that you may have had and because you wanted to be in a relationship. You were so happy that you had someone who wanted to be with you, you were having companionship, you were having, you know, all the butterflies and all the stuff that we love to feel in relationship that you were willing to overlook things that were of major concern that your intuition was telling you, hey, pay attention to this, something is not right. But you buried it because you didn't trust yourself and you didn't trust your intuition and because you wanted this thing so badly, you figure, you know what? I'm going to fix this after we get married or as the relationship progresses, we're going to work on that. And so now you end up in a situation and you're like, you know what? You married this person and boom, it ended in divorce. And now we are here and you're like, yo, and I don't know if I can enter another relationship again, because I don't want history to repeat itself. Number one, two, you, you don't want to miss the signs, number two, and three, you deluded yourself. So you're afraid to get into any relationship anymore because you don't want the same thing to happen. You don't want to 
because you you don't know how to recognize the signs or you're afraid that you're going to get so lost into this person that you are going to miss the signs altogether or you're going to convince yourself that this is the right thing. So for me at this point, thinking about a relationship is not the issue. The issue is we got to work on what is happening in here and what's happening in here. And until you fix this and this, then yeah, you are doomed to repeat the cycle again. It might happen with a different person in a different way, but it will be the same cycle. And am I telling the truth? Or am I telling the truth? Because I know, I know I have been in relation, more than one relationship where it was the same thing. It's like almost the same kind of person you with again. You're like, so how is this keep on happening? Why is it I keep on attracting the same kind of man over and over and over? Different circumstances, different man, same situation. And it's because, like I said before, you don't know who you are and you don't know what it is that you want, you know? And so you are in this cycle where you are frustrated, you want companionship, but you're afraid because you don't know if you're going to repeat the same mistake again. And who wants to live like that? But then you might say, well, Yolanda, you know what? It's safer to, to, to live like that in that fear than repeat that mistake again. And that might sound like a good thing to do on the surface, but the question I would ask you is, who wants to live like that? Think about it, ask it, think about it to yourself. Is that the type of life that you want to live, a life in f of fear and afraid to do something because you're afraid that you're going to make a mistake, okay? And think about it. Is that fear going to stay in just that one little box in your life? Or is it going to start to spread its tentacles into every area of your life? And, you know, there is this, um, this scripture in the Bible that I like. It says, a little yeast permeates through the whole dough. So it just takes one little yeast. And how, who knows how small yeast is to spread its tentacles through the whole thing and affect the whole thing. So now you're not going to only have fear in one area of your life. You're not only going to have frustration, but it's going to spread to different areas. Like I think about these people who have OCD, you know, obsessive compulsive disorders, and they start off with one fear. And then the fear starts to spread to this type of fear and another type of fear. And before you know it, they are homebodies. They can't even step out of their door because that fear took over their whole life. So it started with just the light switch and then it went to something else and then something else. And now they can't even step out their door. And so bringing it back to you, if you say, well, you know what? I'm comfortable with this fear right here, Yola. And it's okay. I'll be alone. I'll be alone because I'm afraid I'm going to fail in another relationship again. I'm afraid I'm going to miss the signs. I'm afraid that I'm going to delude myself again. But is that the solution? Because then think about how it may be affecting other areas of your life. Because we are not compartmentalized being, especially as women. We can, everything is connected for us. So is that the life that you want to live? Tell me. Do you want to live a life of fear, of frustration, okay, of hopelessness? It's like, I want to have another companion, but I'm afraid. So you want to live a life of loneliness? Is that the type of life that you want to live? I know I didn't. And so for me, I had to figure out, okay, so what is it that's causing me to think like this and to be afraid and had to deal with it. And the truth is I had to deal with me because I did not want that life anymore. I wanted a life of freedom. I wanted a life of wholeness. I wanted a life of companionship. I wanted a life of knowing who I was. So is that the type of life that you want? Tell me, say, yes, Yola, I want a life of freedom. We have life a, which is the current life we have now, we in fear, 
we are lonely, we're, you know, we don't know who we are. We, you know, we're, we're making mistakes all the time. That's life number A. Life B is like, okay, we know who we are. We're a confident woman. We're secure in who we are. We're not afraid. We're powerful. We're taking charge of our lives. We know exactly what we want in relationships and who it is that we want in a relationship. Okay. And we can say no to the things that we don't want and be okay with it. Because I know sometimes in life number A, where we're insecure, we're not sure, and we want someone, but we don't want them to think that, you know, we, we are not nice enough. So we, we say yes to things that we are not really comfortable with. That's life number A. And I lived that life and I got so tired of that. So I was like, you know what? Hey, what do I have to do to get to B? I had A, B. I had living A for a long time, pretty much my whole adult life. I'm like, okay, B, okay, I'm ready for B. I was ready for B, so I was taking the choice. So let me know, do you want life number A or letter A or letter B, okay? Imagine what that life would be like. Imagine for a moment what life B would be like. you like, you know who you are. You know how your mind works. You know what it is you want in a man. You know what it is that you don't want and you're willing to walk away and say no and be okay with it and not wondering, I wonder if he thinks that I'm a this or I'm a that because I'm okay. And I wonder, oh my gosh, if I walk away, will I ever find someone else again? And, and so, because if we have those mindsets, those mindsets cause us to enter into relationships that do not serve us because we are afraid. Okay. So, so it's time to let go of life A and embrace of life B. But life B, that's what we want. Life B. Okay. And so this is what I got to offer you. Life B. An opportunity to live life B. Who doesn't want life B? I know I want life B. Life A. Life B, you know? And so you might be saying, well, you know what, Yolande? Who are you to tell me what type of life I should want? You know, if I want to live life A and if I feel comfortable in a corner, then who are you to tell me? Well, I will say this. I can say this because I have lived it. And I know how it feels to live in life A. I know how it feels to want something so bad, but it seems so far away. To want to feel secure in myself and in my decisions, but it seems so far away. I know what it is like to want someone to treat me the way that I want to, but I'm afraid that if I, if I ask for it, that I'm going to drive them away because I was not secure in who I am. I know that, I know that personally. So I can say that Cause I'm like, I didn't want to live like that. I didn't, I was not happy with me. I was not happy with how that made me feel about myself. And who wants to live like that? I know I didn't. And I know I'm not that unique. I am unique, but I know I'm not that different from other women who feel that way. Who wants to live like that? So I can say this because I know it doesn't feel good to be in life A. It doesn't feel good to be hoping and wondering, but still too afraid to embrace what it is that you want, okay? And so then you might say, well, what is you might say, okay? You say, I say, you know what, y'all, I don't need anybody to help me. I can do this all by myself. And that might be true. You may be right. Yes, you can do it by yourself. But let me ask you this question. Have you done it so far? If the answer is yes, then you definitely don't need me. And why are you? And then I would ask then, what is drawing you to listen to what it is I am saying? If you got this under control, if you got your life, then you'll be out there doing life. You'll be living it. You'll be doing it. You'll be free. You'll be having the relationships that you want. You'll be that confident woman that powerful woman you'll be secure in who you are you you're gonna be killing it 
But there's some part of you that knows that, you know what? I'm not really killing it right now because I'm struggling. I might look like I'm killing it to everyone else, but the inside, I'm struggling. It's still a little far away from me. And you realize, you know what? I need some help. That's why I'm here. I'm here to help. I'm here to help because I have walked this path. I have gone through the hard things. I have gone through the work to get over the hard things. And now I am life B. And I can say that with confidence because I'm living it. I am life B. I know who I am. I know what I want. And I go after it with confidence. Okay? So life B all the way. And I've worked with several women. And, you know, I have two of them that I've, 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 I've mentioned so ever so often. You know, I have one I will call Karen because, you know, we work together and I applied some principles, these principles that I, I work with to her life. And she was able to overcome life A and have life B and have the relationships that she desired to feel more confident in herself and in what she wanted and was able to stand up and say, no, I don't want this. Yes, I want that. So she was able to stop that that toxic cycle of picking the same type of man over and over again to transitioning to life B, to being secure in what she wants, not compromising and getting the type of man that she wanted in her life. Okay? Another client I work with, I call her Sarah. And I'm going to protect my client's identities. Call her Sarah. Now, this lady, she was still married, but she was considering a divorce because she was in a really bad situation. And she continued to, you know, just give into her husband and whatever it is he said that he wanted, which were toxic things to her and to the relationship and to her children. And she felt a certain obligation because she didn't know who she was. She didn't know that she could say no. Sometimes we women, we feel that because we're married that we have to say yes to everything that our husbands say. Sometimes we get lost. We lose ourselves. We give over all of our power to um, the spouse. And then when the relationship ends, you're like, you don't even know who you are because you, you morphed into this person. And so we were able to work together and she, she's still in the relationship, but she was able to find herself and be strong and something that she always wanted to do. She always wanted to go back to work, but she was always afraid of what her husband would say, but she was able to find herself and be strong in who she is and do what she needed to do for herself and for her family, for her children, okay? So this works in whatever situation that you are in. Now, you might say, Yolan, you know what? <laughs> you, just, you just want my money. Now, yes, I want your money. A girl gotta eat, right? But to be serious, this is not all about money. We all work, we all get paid. But for me, it is more than money. It's about seeing the change in your life. Seeing you move from life A to life B is worth more than any dollar that anyone can give me. Because I know what it was like for me as a woman to be living life A and then transition to life B. I'll ask you, what is it worth to you to stop living life A and start living life B? You tell me that. What is it worth to you? Can any amount of money in the world be worth that type of freedom, self-assurance, self-confidence, reclaiming of your life, reclaiming of your power? What can be worth that? I don't know what can be. There is nothing. Okay? There is absolutely nothing that can be worth that. So, here we are. You're like, what are the questions? <laughs> what did you mean by that, Julia? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
what other question could you ask me? Because I got, you know what? I'm willing to answer any question because I know I am confident in who I am. I'm confident in what I have gone through and I've come, I'm confident in the processes that I have developed that help women, okay? I am definitely confident in that because I know it works. So it's up to you. The ball is in your court. What life do you want to live? Let me know, do you want life A? Or do you want life B? I know I choose B all day long, all day long, all day long, all day long. Okay. So what I'm offering to you is for the next 48 hours, I'm offering my 60 minute breakthrough session for absolutely free. Normally this session will cost $197, that's $197, but I am offering it for free if you book within the next 48 hours. And so, like I said, for the next 48 hours, so today is Tuesday, so Thursday evening, it expires. If you book a, a, a breakthrough session, an hour long breakthrough session, 60 minutes, it's going to be for free. You book in the next 48 hours. All right. So if you got any questions, let me know. All right. Any questions? Yes, it's for free. The next, the breakthrough session 40 in the, in the next 48 hours, 60 minutes will be for free. Okay. So you, all you got to do is go to the top of my page and click book now, okay? Or book a call with yo.com, all right? That's all I have to offer for you tonight. Have a blessed night, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.